Hey everyone, this is Dan Kopp. I'm the co-founder and lead pastor at The Mission. And before you hear the sermon for today, I want to let you know something. If you are watching this message online or you're playing the podcast, we consider you to be an extended part of our church family. And I want to invite you to partner with us in a very specific way, in a very strategic way, to help us grow our staff. Now, we know that there are a number of amazing charities and organizations that really flood your mailbox and your email inbox at this time of year, asking for a special year-end gift that goes above and beyond what you would normally give to those organizations. So we would really be honored if a portion of your household's year-end giving would include the mission. Even if you never attend our church in person, if these sermons have blessed you, please consider making a one-time gift, knowing that every dollar given will go towards hiring more staff. That will help me personally, and it will help our church in so many ways. Now, ways to give are very simple. And you you need to know that the amount that you give is really between you and God. This is not a guilt thing, but it is an invitation, an invitation to partner with us. So please go to the website, which is our church name. It's themission.church, and you click on the giving tab. And there are two ways to give. The church address is in there. You can mail in a check that way, or there are safe and secure and easy ways to give right online. Thank you so much for considering this. And as you hear today's sermon, may you truly encounter our good, good Father and his love for you. Well, welcome, family. And uh, welcome church family and my family family as well. And uh, some friends I see too. Uh, So good to have you here. Um, So the title of this sermon is When God Turns Your Theology Upside Down. We have a nice picture here. Uh, It's actually me doing a triple Lindy um, out at Lake Orion. Wasn't that there, Luke? I think so. but, uh, um, (laughs) But I digress. Um, so anyway, uh, so when I first came to this church, you know, it, it was very different than how I am now. Uh, my wife and I, we joined up with the church uh, when it first started. Uh, Dan and Kelly had a um, series of teachings called Thursdays at Redemption. And at the end of that series, he mentioned that he was uh, going to start a, a church, plant a church. And he uh, had people fill out interest cards uh, if they were interested. And my wife, being interested, uh, filled out a card. Uh, we were attending Kensington Community Church at the time, and uh, Dan was actually uh, teaching there at the time. He was on staff. And we thought, well, maybe uh, you know, we'll join him in planting another Kensington church. Um, we didn't realize at the time that it was a vineyard church, uh, which was quite a little bit different, uh, well, quite a bit different uh, than what we had been experiencing at uh, Kensington Church. Um, if you're not familiar with the Vineyard Association, uh, the Vineyard Churches, um, it's a more Pentecostal church, a church that believes that the things you see in the Bible, healing miracles, Uh, deliverances, things like that are not just for the Bible times, but for today. And um, yes, and uh, we didn't, you know, I don't think where we were at that they disbelieved that, but we really, they didn't really press into that. And, um, you know, when we came here, we didn't realize that that's what we were stepping into. But soon enough, we did find out that to be the case. Uh, Dan and Kelly asked me to join the advisory board uh, shortly thereafter, and I got a a more inside look at everything and uh, come to find out that, uh, you know, this is is something we were pressing into, was uh, to be a church where uh, the Holy Spirit plays a huge role um, and that uh, we go after things like healing and and all the gifts of the Spirit uh, outlined in 1 Corinthians 12. Um, Now... You know, so this created a tension in me. You know, when I got here, I, I had some background in uh, Pentecostalism, charismatic. I was raised a charismatic Catholic. There's my mom over there. Uh, she uh, introduced me to the gifts of the Spirit. She, uh, you know, used to pray over me in, in tongues and uh, prayed for healing uh, from, I had really bad allergies as a kid. And uh, she uh, prayed for those for years and years, and nothing happened. Nothing happened. So I wasn't too sure about uh, gifts of healing for today because I hadn't experienced it in my own life. 
Um, you know, I thought, yeah, well, maybe it still happens, but it's kind of like winning the lottery, you know, type of thing. And um, on top of that, um, you know, I had another experience. My mom used to bring me to uh, a bunch of healing services and uh, charismatic uh, type meetings. And, um, you know, I would see people falling down, overwhelmed by the Spirit. And uh, if you're not familiar with what that is, it is biblical. Um, it says in Second Chronicles 5, 13, 14, that then the house of the Lord was filled with a cloud so that the priests could not remain standing to minister because of the cloud. For the glory and the presence and brilliance of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. Um, so as you can see, when you experience, uh, back in biblical times, when they would experience God in a, in a mighty way that uh, sometimes they couldn't even get off, up off the ground. Um, so I would see a version of this, you know, at these meetings I went to. And as, as, as a matter of fact, my mom would, would uh, fall over quite frequently. And, um, you know, I, when people would pray over me, I would feel that weight. I would feel that weight. And there would be this, you know, I was only nine years old. I didn't know what to make of it, you know. And, and I would feel this weight, and I'd be like, you know, maybe I should fall down, you know, let go, you know. And uh, so I, at, at one particular meeting, I just decided, you know what, I'm just going to do it. You know, I'm just going to go for it. And I, I gave in to the weight, and I fell over. And I, I even believe I, I got a partial uh, healing from my aller the allergies I had um, at that time. Um, however, my experience of the glory of the Lord was uh, anything but pleasant. I, uh, you know, you would think you'd come out of that feeling like, wow, God, you're awesome. But uh, it was more of a case of I got up, I felt everybody in the room was looking at me, and I said, I'm never doing that again. And I was mortified. I was mortified. Now, you know, I won't go into the reasons that that may have been my experience. Um, I've had uh, somebody that has prayed over me before say, it's a shame that the devil stole that away from you like that. And uh, I believe that's a contributing factor. Um, but th all that to say, you know, these were my experiences with the gifts of the Spirit at that time uh, uh, leading up into uh, joining this church. And so I found myself in a place of what they, they call cognitive dissonant, dissonance, uh, which is the state of having inconsistent thoughts, beliefs, or attitudes especially as relating to behavioral decisions and attitude change. And so, you know, I said to myself, I'm like, you know, if I'm going to be a part of this church, I'm probably going to have to reconcile some of this cognitive dissonance that I'm experiencing. Um, on top of that, you know, something else was, uh, was working on me as well. I had a conversation with a friend of mine um, who raised all kinds of red flags uh, with regard to uh, the charismatic stream of Christianity uh, about a lot of the crazy stuff that was going on at certain churches and, and uh, you know, some of the abuses. And, uh, you know, so I, I kind of got uh, fearful in that regard as well. And so I did what any, um, you know, uh, diligent... Uh, person would do, and I jumped on the internet right away and started <laughs> pulling up all the reputable sources of this uh, of this information that uh, was raising all these red flags. Um, but fortunately, I decided to be uh, open-minded, you know, somewhat open-minded in, in the in regard to all this. And uh, so I I reached out to Dan and I figured, you know what, I better talk to Dan about all this and where I'm at. And, you know, and investigate more, investigate more. You know, it says in 1 John 4, 1, uh, do not believe everyone who claims to speak by the Spirit. You must test them to see if the Spirit they have comes from God, for there are many false prophets in the world. You know, so uh, I decided to come armed with papers and, and everything I had read and test Dan. And uh, uh, fortunately, he came armed with a whole arsenal of papers, and, you know, he's got a seminary degree, so uh, I didn't stand a chance. Um, but he, uh, uh, he laid out things very good, and, you know, that's one of the things I love about our pastor is that he is uh, a, a very good apologist, <laughs> if you will, uh, even, you know, and for things uh, in the charismatic stream as well. 
And so he gave me all kinds of suggestions and things to read, and, and so I, I, I stayed open to that, and, and I, I went down that road. And, um, you know, I, I read a bunch of books, I watched a bunch of videos, uh, I, you know, podcasts and YouTube videos, and it was all fine and dandy, but I knew to really reconcile what I had experienced in my youth, I needed to, um, you know, substitute experience for experience. You know, I needed to uh, taste and see, as they say. Um, so I had to, uh, I decided that at the time, Dan and Kelly were going to a uh, conference called the Voice of the Apostles, uh, which is known for the, you know, uh, for the more charismatic uh, uh, operating in the gifts, so to speak, a lot of healing prayer, words of knowledge, prophecy, and, and things like that. And so I decided to go and check things out. You know, so my brother and I, uh, we hopped on a plane, flew down to Nashville, Tennessee, and uh, we decided to, you know, uh, see for ourselves. Thing was, uh, when I first got there, you know, it, uh, it was bad. It was bad. I won't go into the events that happened the first day, but um, I couldn't even sleep that night. Uh, I had all kinds. I felt fear. The fear was palpable. Um, it was just bad. It was just bad. And the next day, I, I told my brother, I said, uh, you know what, if, if this continues to feel like this while I'm here, I'm leaving early, and uh, probably would have left the church. Um, but fortunately, that wasn't my experience. Um, so when I got there the second day, uh, they had their normal uh, uh, first big corporate session, and then they broke out into uh, little, little breakout sessions. And the one that I decided to go to was... Um, was led by a couple named Rex and Lois Berger. And there's a picture of them in the middle. I don't know who these other two photo bombers are, but <laughs> they somehow got in the picture. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with them, that's uh, uh, two of our beloved members, Chris and Dave Carlson, who were instrumental in uh, getting us our church building here. So uh, they just happened to run into them, and they sent me this picture, so it was pretty cool. But anyway, this breakout session was, uh, uh, was tailor-made for me because Rex and Lois, they were uh, where I was at like 20 years earlier, and they decided to do the same thing and go to a revival that was going on at the, at the time and, and check it out for themselves. And, um, you know, it was speaking right to me. And uh, uh, they, they capped it out with, uh, at the end with, you know, now we would like you here with us to have an experience of the Holy Spirit. And my knees started knocking. The fear ramped up uh, again because I just wasn't sure about this. And uh, I go, okay, I'm just going to be open to it, just going to be open to it. And, you know, they, you would think, you know, you're going to get a... a experience of the Holy, Holy Spirit that they would have like cranked up some worship music or started hyping everybody up, but they didn't. Rex just stepped out and, uh, you know, he, he looks like your uncle, you know, and he, he, he just kind of stepped out and he said, come Holy Spirit. And a guy from about me to the piano over there all of a sudden just goes, whoop, right on the ground. I'm like, <laughs> like that's interesting. <laughs> And uh, uh, then they proceeded to go around the room. They had us all lined up and pray over each person individually. And some people started giggling. Some people started crying. Some people fell in the spirit. And the whole time, I'm just shaking like this, all fearful, just really fearful, um, not knowing what to make out of anything. But they suggested, you know, just talk to God. You know, while you're waiting, praise God, pray to God. And, and that's what I did. And, and I, I, from a heartfelt place, I just prayed. I'm like, God, I am scared of this stuff. I'm just, I don't know if this is for real. I don't want to be fooled. I don't want to be deceived. I, I just want to follow you and follow the way you, the way you want me to. And, uh, you know, and, I, and that was my prayer. And I, I just started, uh, you know, just kept praying like that. And... Uh, so an interesting thing happened. Uh, there was a guy standing next to me, a Brazilian guy, and he was praying. He was all in the spirit, and he just seemed all peaceful. And, and uh, um, I heard in my spirit, I heard just a little nudge, like, put your hand on his shoulder. Put your hand on that guy's shoulder. And right away, I'm like, oh, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> no. He's going to think I'm a freak. Uh, 
And so I, I uh, but then shortly after I had that rebuttal to God's prompting, uh, I heard Rex's voice from what he had just spoken. He said, when you hear the Holy Spirit tell you to do something, you need to do it. And I was like, all right. So I, I did one of these. He was standing over here, and I just kind of, I had my hands out like this, you know, and I kind of like going like this, <laughs> touching his shoulder like that. And, uh, and he looks over at me like, you know, what are you doing? And, and I, just, uh, I just looked at him and said, hey, man, can I, <laughs> this might sound weird, but can I put my hand on your shoulder? And he's like, sure, go ahead. And uh, so I did, and I kept praying. And um, then shortly thereafter, um, I just I had my eyes closed, and I had a, mind eye, a mind's eye vision. I saw, this might sound weird, but stay open. Uh, I, had, I had this mind eye vision. I saw uh, three demonic faces just come off of me back here and snarling at me, just snarling at me. And all of a sudden, they went, whoosh, and then I saw the silhouette of Jesus behind them. And, um, and it was just, uh, it was just pretty incredible. Um, then after that, you know, Rex and Lois made their way around, and, and uh, she, all she did was touch me, and I was like, I'll go right back. And, you know, it was a different experience this time. You know, there was no mortification. There was just, there was peace. Uh, there was a feeling of being loved. There was uh, just an intimacy with God. And, uh, but a weird thing had happened. I was like shivering. You know, sometimes they say that when you have Holy Spirit on you, you feel cold or hot. Or uh, I was feeling cold. I was like really cold. And I, and I just said, God, I need you to warm me up. I'm freezing. And all of a sudden, the next thing that happens is overwhelming joy just comes upon me. And, and I was just, uh, just so joyful. Uh, so it was just a wonderful experience. And, and from that point on, it just became, a, I guess, a God fest, if you will. Um, for the remainder of the uh, conference, I, you know, I saw healing. I saw, I, I had encounters with God. I fell in the Spirit many, many times. And I just had a, a greater communication with the Lord than I've ever had in my life. Um, and it just it just it just flipped me. It just uh, it just changed my, the trajectory of my walk with with Jesus, and I'm forever grateful for that. Um, so um, after that experience, I came back uh, to the vineyard and jumped in with both feet and was like, you know, go Dan, go, and let's do this. And uh, you know, partly because you know, in having those ex that experience at that conference, I walked away with, uh, with a bunch of revelations. Um, you know, the first of which was that the, the fear of the supernatural aspects of God are aggravated by the enemy. You know, it says in Ephesians 6.12, for we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Um, you know, there's, there's a spiritual reality that we don't see, and it, it interacts with our physical reality. And uh, uh, the Lord was gracious enough to give me a glimpse of, of some of what's going on behind the veil, and uh, it was pretty cool. Um, also, you know, it says in 1 Corinthians 4.20, uh, for the kingdom of God is not just a lot of talk, it is living by God's power. And I truly believe that... You know, the enemy and me, me going to that conference, he's like, we got to put the brakes on this because if this guy comes out of this and on a good note, he's going to be, you know, start operating in power. And we don't want that. We don't want that. And so, um, you know, I, I believe that, you know, created that spiritual battle in me. Um, I also learned that, obviously, this was the most obvious one, uh, when the Lord suggests you do something, just do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, uh, Acts 5.32 speaks into this. Uh, Peter, as he was testifying uh, in front of uh, some, some of the Pharisees, he said, we are witnesses of these things, and, and so is the Holy Spirit, who is given by God to those who obey him, right? And uh, I don't think I would have had that same experience I had had I not acted out in, and took that risk in uh, you know, in believing that, hey, this might be God talking, you know, try, give it a try. Um, a real important one. So, you know, I had all these, 
uh, fears about, you know, the abuses um, in the charismatic stream of Christianity, some of the over-the-top stuff, uh, some of the um, some of the televangelists and whatnot. And, um, you know, I heard, I got, uh, I, I found this out, that God allows the counterfeit to coexist with the real thing. And he speaks about that in Matthew 13, 24, 30, uh, through a parable. Here is another story Jesus told. The kingdom of heaven is like a farmer who planted good seed in his field. But that night, as the workers slept, his enemy came and planted weeds among the wheat, then slipped away. When the crop began to grow and, reprodu and produce grain, the weeds also grew. The farmer's workers went to him and said, Sir, a field where the field where you planted the good seed is full of weeds. Where did they come from? An enemy has done this, the farmer exclaimed. Should we pull the weeds, they asked? No, he said. You'll uproot the wheat if you do. Let both grow together until the harvest. Then I will tell the harvesters to sort out the weeds, tie them into bundles, and burn them, and put the wheat in the barn. So, you know, at that conference, I did see some people that were there just for the experience of things, uh, some of the people that were just doing over-the-top over exhibitionist-type realities. But I think they, they, they let that stuff go on because they don't want to quench the Holy Spirit. You know, if you right away tackle those guys, you know, uh, it might disrupt everything in the room. And, uh, you know, this kind of, this verse kind of confirmed that for me. And another point I'd like to make is, is that, you know, most churches do allow the weeds to grow with the wheat. It's just, it's more apparent in the uh, charismatic stream. Uh, but what about just, you know, the quote-unquote regular churches where there are people that show up for church every Sunday and just to check the box? Or, to, uh, or just to be entertained by the awesome worship band they have. You know, um, those are weeds, you know. Uh, it's just not as overt, and they don't make us uncomfortable when, when we see them just sitting in their seats. Um, you know, so that kind of put it into perspective for me. And the nice thing is, is like I said, you know, if you're at a church uh, where you really have a pastor that you can trust, like I feel we do, um, you know, things won't get out of hand. Things won't get out of hand. So that said, uh, how do you tell the weeds from the wheat? Uh, well, my next revelation was, you will know them by their fruit. This is the litmus test for discerning between the two. It says in Matthew 7, 16, 18, you can identify them by their fruit, that is, by the way they act. Can you pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? A good tree produces good fruit, a bad tree produces bad fruit. A good tree can produce can't produce bad fruit, and a bad tree can't produce good fruit. So th this was the deal, you know, um, you know, at this conference. I, I saw firsthand, you know, that some of the people that were rolling around on the floor, some of the people that were shaking like this, uh, falling out in the spirit, and all these other things were the same people that um, exhibited all the, the fruit of the spirit. As, uh, as outlined in Galatians 5, you know, the love, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, on and on and on. And on top of that, they, these were the people that were doing missions in, in Muslim countries, and these were the people that had, um, had homes for uh, orphans, and these were people that were working in all kinds of ministries, all kinds of incredible ministries, planting churches, you know. And so me, for me, that's... You know, that's what uh, legitimizes everything. Uh, then there's my own personal fruit. So I walked away from that after, after falling on the ground and, and doing all these things that ordinarily make me, would make me uncomfortable and still sometimes do. Um, and, you know, I'm a different person today. You know, I, uh, I, I'm more bold for Christ. I pray with people at work. I, I uh, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I have a hunger for Christ, a greater intimacy with him. And, you know, I wouldn't be up here today. T I'm an introvert. I wouldn't be up here today talking if, you know, if it wasn't for the fact that, you know, uh, he asked me to do this, you know, and I want to do anything for him now, anything. Um, so, so you will know them by their fruit. So no mission sermon would be complete without action steps. So, so I've got some for you. Um, the first of which is, you know, when, you know, when I had my experiences growing up, especially the one with uh, falling in the spirit, being overwhelmed by the spirit, 
um, I made an agreement, you know. I said, I'm never doing that again, you know. And uh, my question to you is this, you know, if, if you're uncomfortable with a lot of the supernatural aspects of, of Christianity, are there agreements that you made from your past, you know, that you uh, may have experienced growing up or a bad experience you had at a church or, you know, something like that? Did you make that agreement and thus closing the door on all this? Um, might want to reconsider. Uh, next thing is meet with someone whose walk with the Lord you respect and who ascribes to these beliefs, you know, and, and better yet, who operates in the who has the who operates in the gifts of the Spirit. Um, you know, that's the approach I took, and uh, it, it paid off. Uh, read books, listen to sermons, watch videos, um, attend a conference like I did, or come to our, my brother and I started a meeting last Friday of every month. Uh, we're going to have one uh, this, this month on the 29th called Fire on Friday and where we just try to create a, an atmosphere by which people can experience, you know, kind of like what Rex and Lois did, uh, but we incorporate worship music and, and uh, uh, come to that, you know, and just, you know, come hungry for more of God. Um, and then do this, you know, it's between you and God, you know. Ask the Lord to reveal the truth. And if you feel so uh, bold, ask him for the gifts. You know, it says in 1 Corinthians 12, 31, but earnestly desire the higher gifts, and I will show you a still more excellent way. You know, I, um, just on a personal note, so uh, as I started, you know, investigating these things, I decided, you know, I, I want the, the gift of tongues. You know, my mom had it. I, I, I want it to. And so... Uh, we were at a uh, uh, at a, a church called the River of God in Romeo. Uh, we, my wife and I, were attending a meeting where it was uh, just soaking in in worship music. Um, and I was talking to the pastor there, and, and I, I said you know, we got on the topic of the gift of tongues, and he's all, "Oh, you can get that. You can get that right now. Let's pray over you." You know. And so he and a group of people are praying over me and my wife, and you know, he's like, "Now do it. Just open your mouth. They'll come." And I'm like. I'm like, I might throw up, I don't know, but, I, I, you know, no tongues coming out, you know, but I kept pursuing, and the interesting thing of it was, was that um, weeks later, I was at home, uh, I pray over my, my kids all the time, we only had two at the time, and two or three, and I was, <laughs> <laughs> which by the way, I forgot to put up that picture of the, of the family, I don't know if you can go back there, yeah, here, here's some of the fruit right here, here's... <laughs> This is my gang right here, and, uh, you know, if you see any little kids run around this place, the chances are they're either mine or the Di Rienzos, if you know them. <laughs> um, and, uh, but anyway, I only had about, uh, I only had, we only had two or three at the time, and I was praying over their bedroom and uh, outside their door on my knees and praying, and then all of a sudden something bubbled up within me, and all of a sudden I'm just like babbling gibberish. And uh, I'm like, oh, this must be tongues, you know. And, uh, and I, so I just started going with it, and I went with it, and I went late in my bed and just started, just kept going with it and going with it. And uh, I felt totally filled with the Holy Spirit. And, uh, you know, and, and here it is. And it's developed into just a, a prayer language where I just have an increased sensitivity to, uh, to God and what he's saying and uh, uh, just, uh, just a greater intimacy with him. And I'm just really grateful for it today. Um, Last point I want to make, uh, and this is probably the most important, is, you know, in pursuing these gifts and being, staying open to these things, keep it about the love, you know, keep it about the love. Um, you know, the, when, when God created these things and blessed his, his church, his body with these things, it was with the intention that they would be used to love him and love others, um, and especially to love people into the kingdom. You know, uh, um, if the motivation is just to, uh, you know, the Cedar Point mentality, you know, just to have a great experience or to, um, or perhaps to look cool, you know, I can speak in tongues, um, you know, you're, you're definitely going down the wrong avenue and, and chances are it will create, it will create problems. Uh, so keep it about the love. You know, it says in 1 Corinthians 13, 2, 
If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and I have the faith that can move mountains but do not love, I am nothing. You know, and, uh, you know, we have, to, we have to, that needs to be the foundation. And uh, uh, I feel really good about our church that that is the case here. And uh, I'm just uh, blessed to be a part of it. And I'm blessed that you all were willing to listen to my message today. Thank you. I love you. Can I close in prayer? All right. Uh, Holy Spirit, uh, come. Holy Spirit, come. I thank you, God, uh, that you are so good, that you, um, that you make yourself very real to us uh, through your giftings, through your manifestations, and through your love. I pray, God, that uh, as we move in our, our own personal journeys, that you would meet us exactly where we're at, wherever that is, and that you would move us from the current glory to the next glory, and that you, um, and that you would be exalted in, in all of it. So we pray for this in your name, Jesus. Amen.